Welcome back to Flux and Guts by Moxie Welds. I'm your host, Metalsmith Moxie. If you're new to the channel, this channel is all about welding, metalsmithing, fun projects, tips and tricks, and so much more. So stick around. So this is Professor Pop. <laughs> that is so funny. That's ridiculous. All right, so what are we gonna do today, Pop? <laughs> So today we're going to do a short tutorial on how to weld DC aluminum on a 6061 T6 quarter inch plate. So we're going to, we need to make sure that our plate is completely clean. We're going to find out why it's necessary to have the two different size cups, the number seven and the number five tip cup. And then we're going to, it's why it's so necessary to clean our welding rod before we weld DC aluminum. So welding DC aluminum one of the most important things other than the cleanliness of the gas is your your tungsten now when welding uh, stainless steel or steel most people use a tungsten that's sharpened like this but with dc aluminum if you weld with a tungsten like this because of the voltage and the gas because the helium kicks up the voltage of the voltage of the weld arc it will blow through quarter inch aluminum very quickly so to, to resolve that, we use tungsten that's sharpened like this. So we start like this, and then we grind a flat on the end, and that will cut the voltage down so it will not blow through your quarter-inch aluminum or your bevel, whatever you're welding. Can you hold them next to each other? So, let me figure sharp we want it like that with that squared off tip yes we also you also want to make sure that your gas is not so high that it will actually push through the aluminum so you want to have uh, your gas at about 15 cfh around there between 10 and 15 that way you'll have enough ga gas coverage using a number five cup and not so little gas coverage where your where your arc will be will uh, not have enough coverage your your weld your weld puddle will not have enough coverage all right pop so why is tig welding aluminum on dc not used in the industry today on honestly i don't know it's it seems like it's a dying art it's not very it's not used pretty much anywhere anymore um 20 years ago, when I, 29 years ago, when I first started in the trade, it was being used everywhere uh, because of the simple fact that you could weld one inch aluminum with a minimum preheat. You could, you could start, you could start um, with a deep penetrating with a root. You can deep penetrate into that root quickly using uh, DC, uh, using DC aluminum with helium as, as, the, as the gas and you could move quickly and efficiently. You could actually burn 10, 10 pounds of, uh, of 332 welding rod a day with TIG. The, uh, if the more, uh, and the more practice you got, the faster you got. So you could actually do a minimum preheat of actually 250 degrees on one inch thick, and you could keep that going all day long. And uh, so today, helium is so expensive and pe people like to use AC, and AC can actually cause problems because it, if the, the frequency is wrong, you could actually spit tungsten onto your, onto your part. It could cause flight hardware to fail. So that's why DC was such a, a better choice to use in the past, but it isn't being used any longer today. All right, Pop, so explain to us about the weld settings you have here, what machine you're using, and uh, maybe a little about the gas since you're standing next to the bottle there. Okay, so here we have a Dynasty 400. And I'm kind of particular about my, my own settings, the way I like my machine. I, a lot of people say, oh, you know, 150 amps, oh, 175 amps. No, you control the voltage. That's why you have, that's why you have the foot pedal. So I usually start at 200 amps, and then I control what what uh, amperage I'm putting into the material. Now, of course, when we're welding arc welding or we're doing something else, 
Of course, there are settings that you, parameters that, are, that need to be met. But when we're, we're TIG welding, when we're DC aluminum, you set it where you like it. So you're running DC straight polarity, which is DC negative today, but we always used to call it DC straight in the industry. And we're, we're set at 200 amps. Our, uh, our post flow, our post flow uh, is about eight seconds. Our, our, our uh, pre is usually uh, like half a second or yeah, 0.25 of, of a second, something like that before, before uh, the gas kicks on before the arc starts. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then let's move on over here to, to, our, um, to our gases. So I, here I'm running, I'm running two gases here that I keep on the machine all the time. I keep argon and I keep helium. Whenever I'm welding AC, I always mix, I always mix my own gas. I, always, I have a Y set up on the back of the machine and I regulate the flow by using the regulators, the CFH on the regulators to get my mixture of my gas. It's, I know it's the old school way, uh, but I'm not that young anymore. So um, I know they sell mixers nowadays where you can use to mix, your, to mix gas, but this way has worked and it's always worked for me. It's never given me any trouble. So this is the way I do it. Now with, well now with DC, DC aluminum, we use uh, helium. We use uh, 15 CFH. And uh, now there's differences in aluminum and, and, uh, and there's differences in helium. You can, and you can actually run into trouble with helium. There's an ultra high purity helium and then there's just a welding, the, the basic welding grade aluminum, a welding grade helium that, they, uh, that you can buy and there's difference in prices, the, of course the ultra high purity is going to be more expensive and you won't have any trouble with uh, uh, actually welding aluminum because you can actually get a soot buildup when, you, when you're welding aluminum, DC aluminum, which will not allow the puddle to form. And this can happen more with the regular welding grade heliums. The ultra high purity, uh, it doesn't happen as much, but it can happen. So if for some reason you can't figure out why is this weld looking so awful, why is this weld, uh, why is this weld not changing, why is it why am why is it not clear and and uh, and shiny so I can so I can dip my rod, it's usually because either you have a loose connection on the hosing, or you have a dirty uh, a dirty bottle of helium. So you always have to look at that first. Uh, switch bottles out if you have an extra bottle, and if that clears it up, you know that's your, what your problem was, was the helium. What do you got there on top of the wall there? So here I have a, my uh, tick box. I keep all my, uh, all my uh, I don't call it and call it bodies, all of my uh, different tip, all of my different cups, um, and this and this and caps and tungsten, all my different tungstens. And this, this is how I you know, keep myself organized and I can take it from place to place as I go from uh, building to building doing repairs. Hey, just want to take this time out. If you haven't done so already, if you're enjoying what you're watching and learning a lot, go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe down below. That really helps out the channel so that I can continue uh, making more videos with more tips and we can all grow together. All right, Pop, so clearly this is a very organized TIG filler rod section. What is your system that you use here? So here I make sure that I, I have everything separated in different, uh, uh, different uh, rod bins. We always want to make sure that our, our rod is clean and dry, ready to use, because if you think about it, if you go weld on something, and it breaks, it fails, you can hurt somebody. So you're only as good as the equipment that you have. And for lack of a better term, cleanliness is close to godliness. <laughs> so we need to make sure that our rod is completely taken care of. It's labeled so that we know what we have. Um, I've taken tests where I've noticed that uh, some people will accidentally mix in stainless steel with aluminum because they don't have enough experience to realize that the differences in weight 
with, between the rods, and because they look so similar, they actually put in, they actually try to dip stainless steel into, into an aluminum part. And when you're working with flight hardware, or you're working with something that, uh, something that is working on a, some sort of equipment, and, it, and you don't clean that out and it fails, you could hurt somebody. So you need to have everything labeled in its place, ready to go, so you can just pick it up and walk away and do, and do your job to the best of your ability to make sure that nobody is, that everybody's safe, everybody gets to go home at the end of the day, and that you make sure that people don't die or f when they fall out of the air because, of, because you messed up because you used the wrong rod. Now that's something that you've mentioned a couple times is uh, flight hardware. So what do you mean when you say flight hardware? Clearly you're talking about some kind of aircraft stuff. What, where have you worked at before? Uh, about, uh, about 20 years ago I worked um, with my father and uh, we, I came up in the trade. I started there when I was 18 and we did a lot of commercial airliner, airline stuff. Uh, we did a lot of stuff for satellites, e even we did a lot of military stuff years ago. And so everything that we did was, had to be labeled, everything had to be kept in, in hot boxes, so that way uh, everything was, um, so that way everything that we did was uh, kept up to standard and that we, we make sure that people who flew on the airplanes that we, that we did repairs on, um, who, who the, all the hardware, all the hardware stuff that we, that we welded on, everything we wanted to make sure that all those people that, that flew on those planes were safe. So that's why we, we make sure that everything we do is up to standard. All right, so before we get welding, why is it so important? I see that you're gonna, you're gonna clean the filler rod. Why is, why, why are you doing that? Well, cleaning the filler rod, because when the filler rod sits for quite some time, it builds up, it builds up a little bit of an oxide on it. So we, you want to make sure that you clean the rod. And you see, here, let me grab one out of the tube and I'll show you a little bit better. So you can feel it dragging and it will leave a, a little bit of a, a line in, in the rag. So you need to make sure that your, that your uh, welding rod is completely clean. And you'll, once in a while, you'll get some of those cheap bosses out there. Stop doing that. Just start welding. Just move. You'll hear that. But when that part fails, because that guy didn't want you to clean this little thing that's going to go in that part, then we'll see who's going to be crying then. So you need to make sure that always... Your welding rod is completely clean before you, before you start welding, especially on something that's going to be used commercially, that people are going to be transported in, like a plane or a vehicle. Anything that, that has to do with safety, for people, you want to do your best to make sure that those people are safe so they can go home the next day to their family or that evening. Or the milk in the end.
Okay. Now, if you look at this weld, it's a little on the concave side where we're using 15 CFH of, of helium to weld this. Now, if you notice, the plate is completely clean. So we welded this, we welded this with a number seven cup. And the weld, it got very hot and penetrated very deeply, very quickly, and actually pushed through the opposite side of the plate itself. Now, to remedy that on quarter inch plate, we'll show you what we used, what we did next. Okay, Pop. Okay, so here we go. So you're going to hear a whistling when you're welding for the first time with uh, DC aluminum. But don't be afraid, it's normal. The trick is to make sure that that cutter that you're dipping in is nice and shiny. That way you know you're getting a decent weld. That it looks clean in that center of that cutter. Now if you look at the other side of the plate here, the weld has a little bit of a crown and it's what you want. But if you notice here, I made a mistake. This crater here at the end, how to remedy that is that you lower the voltage or you lower, you lower the amperage of your foot pedal while you're welding and you put a dab right on the end. You put a dab right on the end and it's called crowning the king. That will stop this crater from happening and that will crack and then you, and then you, go, you drop off slowly on your pedal to stop. If you just stop quickly, drop your pedal off, it will crater, and this can, uh, this can crack, especially on a job that could be a very important, some aerospace job, whatever you're working on, could be important, it will crack. So you need to make sure that this is always, that there's no crater, that you always crown the king on the end of that, on the end of that puddle. And so, and so we remedied this, this you know, to, we remedied the, we added the crown of the weld with adding the number, with using the number five cup. That is what corrected this to make this weld, like to make this weld with a crown rather than pushing through like we did on the opposite side of the weld. <laughs> Don't make fun of me. <laughs> I had my foot up on the thing. I thought I had it on the pedal. All right. Ooh, I like your lens. Why what? Because it's handy. Hey, I didn't do too bad though. That one inch looked good. <laughs> No, I dipped. Oh, shoot. I think I might be pretty good at this. Huh? I did hit the tungsten. I dipped it, but I think, I think I did pretty good. Yeah, hold on. I'm bringing the camera over. All right. Not stopping or editing nothing. Let's take a look at it.
Thanks for sticking around, guys. Literally what you saw was my first time trying that out as well. That was my first time um, putting down my first little uh, DC TIG aluminum weld there. And yeah, it was fun to learn together. Hopefully this helps you guys out. And like with everything, um, the more you practice, the better you'll get. And I know I definitely need to practice. It didn't come out too bad, so I was excited. But more practice means better welds. So use this whenever you need it. Hopefully it helps you guys in the future on other projects you're doing, especially obviously those uh, heavier aluminum jobs. And yeah, be out there. Be mox. <laughs> I'm tripping on my words this morning. It's too early in the morning. I'm doing this before work. <laughs> so get out there, be moxalicious, post all your moxalicious moments at hashtag be moxalicious. I have my Instagram link and the hashtag and everything down in the description below. Share this channel with friends, family, loved ones, anyone else you think that can benefit from different kind of weird welding content or metalsmithing stuff. And please comment, like, and subscribe. That really helps the channel out. And I will see you guys next Monday at 3. So, say something? Something. A little more? Something, 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 something. More, 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 more. <laughs>